Hello, my name is Joshua Rudd of the Rudd's Home Farm, and today I'm going to be showing you how I change my water and keep my system clean to ensure that there's no root rot or any or any clogs or anything like that. Uh, it's a process I go through, and I'll just go ahead and walk you through how I do it, and maybe you can learn something. If you like, if you want any of my tools or equipment, please check out the link below in the description to go to my website where I post everything that I have in this system. Thank you. And let's get into it. So obviously, first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and turn off your pumps. I have two pumps in there. One to circulate and one to actually pump the water through the system. Uh, I have that weighted on there to hold the return down. And give the system a chance to kind of equal out, even out. So while it's doing that, I'll go ahead and um, I'll open up the drain. Water and electricity don't mix well, so always make sure you put your cords far away from the water. Disconnection is easy. These are just return lines from the other buckets from the other side of this one. So you can see those four buckets connect to this line. This bucket connects to this line. So if I just take one of these off, it'll just drain. I'll go ahead and make sure I hose down the buckets a little bit. These are white, so that means I'm going to have a slight algae problem. You can see brown algae and you can see green algae in there. So what I do is I just take a little hose and I just spray the inside of the container and then that should get rid of the algae off the sides and in the bucket at the bottom. That's good enough. I'm not too worried about the algae as long as it's not in excess and maybe just on like the outside of the container, that's not really a problem. But when it becomes a problem is when it's fermenting in your container because it's stagnant. So on the side's okay, but if it's like sitting on the top of the water, you may have pH issues and stuff like that. And the purpose the purpose of this pump is to clean water, so you have to take the filter end off of this one. Oh, one-handed stuff. Okay. Okay, so we just dump that in there. And you can see there's a hole. So whenever I wash it, all the water just comes out. Easy peasy, right? Okay, now comes the fun part, making the nutrients. So what I do is I put all of my nutrients in one bucket full, and then I just fill the rest of the buckets with water. So it's not like I'm mixing batches every single time I fill up this bucket and then pour it in the system, fill up this bucket and pour it in the system. I just put all my nutrients into one bucket, pour it in the system, and then I just add water, which is a lot easier and simpler. So follow me as I show you how I do it and what I use. So the first thing we use is our Flora Grow. I use one teaspoon per gallon. And so I also use a kitchen calculator. A little magnet right here to determine how many teaspoons per gallon that I need so I can do big measurements. One thing you wanna make sure is you always shake vigorously the contents. I didn't shake last time and I had it was bad. So make sure you just shake really well. Every time you use it, they're all mixed up in there. This is a tablespoon right here. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons. One. Two. I never mix concentrates together. So whenever I add something, I always add water. I always add water. Next up is kale magic. It's a, it adds calcium and magnesium 
to your uh, nutrients, which is very important for plants to make sure they don't get tip burn. If you want, you can search up my video where I did a video on tip burn and I showed you how much plants. So this is this is very important that you have cow magic. And it's the same measurement as the nutrients. One teaspoon per gallon. All right, last, last batch is HydroGuard. Uh, this prevents root rot by eliminating the uh, root rot causing bacteria. This stuff is organic stuff, so it's like, it's like good bacteria that will kill the root rot bacteria. I have been using hydrogen peroxide, which just kills everything, but I wanted to give this HydroGuard a try and see how well it works because it's highly recommended and uh, you should you should probably use this instead because there's there's good bacteria in the water that you don't want to kill that will help your plants grow and this makes sure everything's dead the hydrogen peroxide and you can only buy this from a hydroponic store whereas the hydroguard you can get online so let's go ahead and add this to the mix Another thing I want to note, note about using hydrogen peroxide is it sucks to handle. If you ever get 34% food grade on your hands, it burns and it sucks. And you get like these white colorations on your hand. I'll show you a picture right there. And so if you do use this, make sure you wear gloves or you're very careful and like wash your hands after using it immediately. So you can wash all that stuff off because it comes off with water really easily. So, but after you get the burn, it takes longer. The good thing about water pressure is that these will, if I pour it into one bucket, it'll fill up all the other buckets and I don't have to worry about adding water each bucket. So this might take a minute, so bear with me. fill these up two more times. This is a pH meter. If you have bad water, you might want to check this often, but I have pretty good water, so I only check every once in a while. So you just plop that sucker in the water. Look at that, a perfect seven. Perfect seven pH, couldn't get better than that. This is on my website if you want to get this. It's super cheap and it's required for hydroponics because if you have too high or too low pH, you will get nutrient lockout and your plants will not be able to absorb nutrients. This is a micro semen meter or an EC meter. Uh, this pretty much conducts electricity. How much, ele if, let me try it again. This tells you how much additives are in your water, dissolved minerals, because it affects how well electricity is conducted in your water. So the higher the content, the higher the resistance of the electricity, the more stuff you have in your water. And so if you have too much stuff, then the nutrients you put in there won't absorb. I use, I, I don't have any problem with my water, but if you use like well water or rain water, you probably wanna check this. So let's go ahead and stick that in there. And that will hold. All right, so we have 12, 67 micro siemens. Uh, that's pretty good. I really don't know what's a perfect one, but we could do a quick test to see what it's like before nutrients. And I will do that now. 
All right, so this is EC meter, micro semen meter uh, with just plain water without additives. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in there and press the whole button. All righty, 461. That's just, like I said, I haven't had any, don't worry about it too much. I've had no issues with the absorb, absorption of nutrients into the water. And so this is just the numbers you kind of want to see when you're doing stuff. So water can hold a lot of dissolved minerals. So a lot. Like if you really want to try, you can just add salt to water until it can't do it anymore. And you'll be surprised how high you can get it. Thank you for joining me as I changed out my nutrient solution for the week. It should be done at least once a week, if not more. Otherwise, you'll have issues with root rot and nutrient deficiencies or nutrient over overages. If you add nutrients to nutrients over and over again, you'll get a toxicity of, of nutrients. So either or is pretty bad. If you like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to check out my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.